How does HIV progress to AIDS? HIV is a virus that destroys cells of the immune system, making affected individuals susceptible to opportunistic infections. These are infections that a person with a healthy, normal immune system wouldn't get because the immune system is able to fight them off. However, if someone has HIV and the virus kills off a lot of the immune system, then that person would be susceptible to these infections. Here's a way that I remember what the word opportunistic means. An opportunist is somebody who takes advantage of opportunities to help themselves, even if it comes at the expense of somebody else. For example, let's say you're at the public library and you use one of the computers there, but when you leave, you forget to log out of your Facebook account. If the next person who uses that computer is an opportunist, then he might take that opportunity to look at your private information or even post some embarrassing things on your page. And the reason why he's able to do that is because your security system is down. In other words, he didn't need to know your password in order to enter your account. HIV works in a very similar way. If the security system preventing microorganisms from causing disease is down because HIV killed off part of the immune system, then those bugs can take the opportunity to infect. So let's make some space so we can talk more about the progression to AIDS. So let's graph this out. We're looking at time on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, CD4 count in blue and viral load in red. So initially, CD4 levels are very high, they're at about 1,000, and viral load levels are very low. But then HIV will replicate very, very rapidly, and that will keep going until the body is able to mount an immune response, and that will bring the viral levels down, but it's not going to bring it all the way down to zero. Then at the same time, CD4 levels will decrease very, very rapidly, and then when the immune system kicks in, that will bring the CD4 levels back up again, but again, not all the way up to normal. This part is called the acute phase, and it lasts for several weeks. The next phase is the latent phase. It's called latent because HIV is in the patient's body, but it's not causing any symptoms yet. HIV continues to reproduce, but not as quickly as before because there aren't as many host cells to support it. So viral load goes up, but not as quickly as before. And then at the same time, CD4 levels go down, but again, not as quickly as before. And when the CD4 levels fall below 200, that is when the person is said to have AIDS. And at this point, the viral and at this point the viral load will increase much much more rapidly. And the first thing we'll see are constitutional symptoms, constitutional. And these are vague non-specific symptoms such as fever or weight loss or fatigue and then the patient will become highly susceptible to opportunistic infections. At this stage, it is very important for the patient to avoid anything that might increase their risk of getting an infection because with such a low CD4 count, it will be very hard for the patient to be able to fight off infections. This is why many people with AIDS die from infections that normally don't affect people with healthy immune systems. A few examples are CMV or PJP. Here are a couple important points to take away from this. Early on, when the patient doesn't have very many copies of the virus, a blood test for HIV might not detect the virus. That doesn't mean that the patient doesn't have HIV. They are still developing the disease and they can still pass it on through sexual contact or contact with the blood. Second, it takes years for a person infected with HIV to develop AIDS. If the infection is caught early and is treated aggressively with antiretroviral therapy, also known as HART, and I'll write that down here, HART, then the viral load can stay low and the CD4 count won't decrease as much. That's why it's necessary for individuals with HIV to start treatment right away.